I'm Adam Molnar, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Sociology and Legal Studies, and I'm a member of the Cybersecurity and Privacy Institute. So we're working on workplace surveillance, so the use of employee monitoring applications, particularly in the era of remote work uh, and cyber stalking. And then we're also looking at a number of different uh, issues related to police uh, and security intelligence using technologies uh, for surveillance uh, for public safety and security. Workplace surveillance is ubiquitous. Uh, you don't really have a workplace without some form of monitoring. It's important to note that workplace surveillance is an old phenomenon. The rationales of monitoring workers uh, for the purposes of, of productivity, uh, and discipline. The thing that's different today, however, is that the technologies and the, and the methods have changed. We're researching the use of employee monitoring applications in Canadian workplaces, especially during remote work. And we're also looking at what the, the sort of security and privacy risks are. Our research has shown that there are significant security vulnerabilities associated with using these apps. When it comes to legal questions, we're still ahead of uh, that part of the study. So we're looking very closely at Bill C-27, specifically revisions to Canada's PIVDA, private sector privacy legislation, uh, and whether Bill C-27 um, adequately uh, will protect uh, employees. And I think citizens can, can always have a say uh, in how their data is used. In fact, they have user rights, you know, a right to access under Canadian privacy legislation to access information from uh, companies, uh, from the government. I think the challenge exists in, uh, as we move towards technological innovation, the ways in which we're able to get beyond uh, the consent model where uh, oftentimes users aren't fully aware of the ways in which their data is collected uh, and shared with third parties. and. Uh, and then used in ways that uh, can be discriminatory. You know, informed consent is probably uh, not really holding in, in today's day and age when we look at the ways that terms of service uh, appear to your average end user. It's incumbent on legislators, it's incumbent on regulators to ensure that there are you know, minimum protections that are meaningfully enforced. Otherwise, we sort of could very easily drown in the number of steps that uh, one needs to take to level up their security. Uh, and, you know, to be quite honest, it's not always the responsibility of the individual end user um, to be aware of these things. Part of our work draws together folks from sociology, computer science, uh, and law. And then we also try and partner with NGOs and civil society groups. Our, you know, our approach is basically to try and um, examine a surveillance-related phenomenon. From the sociological side, we try and look at the, the, uh, the norms and the representations that basically make certain forms of surveillance appear as legitimate and even desirable in spite of the harms that they can engender. From the technical side, we often try and examine the security and privacy risks that exist within the applications themselves. We're also interested in doing some, some network level measurement so that we can see where data flows are moving, what servers they're transiting. And by looking at, at, at route tracing, we can determine geographical contexts as a jurisdictional context, and it gives us a window into knowing what legal jurisdictions are at play, uh, and it helps guide our legal analysis. I work in the area of social impacts, law, and regulation. So for people looking to get into you know, cybersecurity and privacy questions, there's certainly demand in having uh, skilled individuals that understand the technological environment and are able to connect that to the broader social issues. I think it's very useful to understand in a very detailed way uh, what's happening at the technical level, how that is connected to broader social and cultural issues. Uh, and then also, you know, importantly, 
where existing regulatory safeguards, existing laws fall short. I would say that you're always going to be bringing more to the table if you understand the connection between the technological environment and critically what the social impacts are.